So Utner John had a really good idea actually. Um, yeah. So the topic is macers. Um, the thing with macers is that they don't have really many crucial perks. They don't use um, oh well. Uh, they don't sorry. They don't use berserk. They don't use killing frenzy because it's not their their um, job to, to to kill stuff. Right? It's it's their job to to stun stuff. Yeah. And often enough, you have to you have to save your fatigue. Um, and not taking that second swing that you could take, but rather saving saving your stun, saving your fatigue for for the stun in the next turn to keep your uh, target in stun lock. Yeah. Um, so what I do is I go for um, fast anticipation on my on my macers because they don't need that many perks, like I already said. And Udnirgen just suggested to go over what. Wh- overwhelm on macers and i think that could be a really decent strategy actually if you have pooper macers because mm-hmm. the only thing that the macer really needs uh is fatigue um and with overwhelm if you have two macers on a hatch knight then chances are that that guy is is, is yeah he's he's basically in stun lock i don't know um if overwhelm would be um would be an overkill so to speak because um you don't have many tries right you, you only have basically two tries and you don't have a ranged attack where overwhelm really shines is with ranged weapons because you can apply overwhelm on uh, a cluster of enemies while, when using ranged weapons and not hitting with it so yeah that's true i think uh It's quite a good idea. I think maybe we could try that one. Uh, so basically, I take the wooden club. Don't want to. Done. Oh, maybe it bit too. I think we can try some builds. I think the next uh, game of the month I'll run, I'll try and experiment a bit. Now we we'll could start regular tactic. Perfect. Yeah, let's do a spreadsheet with. Uh with different experimental builds yep and i mean you're probably one of the the most experienced players right now in the community or in in the in the, in the streaming community i don't know about the guys that are not streaming of course um so if if one can make it work then it, it's probably you so we definitely not want to talk here. Really not. I like to have full surrounds. Open. Possible. Uh, not willing to go. I'm gonna let you live if you just give me. <laughs> so we lost uh, one dog here, but the rest they are still champions. So we spawn. What turned out to be a very bleak situation. 
beginning and he turned into food now. Ah, we get the armor. Ah. Didn't get the helmet on Fortune. I don't really like the helmet, it's very nice for the archers. Um, but we've had quite good luck with Rigan leaders, so we cannot really complain. Good. Get back to town. I love <laughs> that's so cool. It's hunting. More brigands. We have a uh, actually a risk that warps again. On the bench, <sighs> oh. Amazing. Good. <coughs> okay, so another plus one, just like all the other. Okay, so. Him up. Oh. So Udnerjan will experiment with uh, nimble overwhelm macers. Yeah, I, I think it's an interesting idea. I just I'm I'm too afraid of picking nimble because if nimble fails you, then then you're in a lot of trouble. Uh, yeah. I can say what I like and what I don't like about it. So yeah. Um. I like the effect with the, uh, you can say, of course, nimble and overwhelm is a synergy because you want to act early and have light uh, armor probably. What I don't like is I often use my mazes to engage brigand leaders, the head knight, all those guys who run of damage. So. I would be kinda scared for that strategy. Yeah, yeah, same here. I could do it like, hey, let's just say we have this unique armor. It's okay, it's 170. You have the ace, 10. You have a shield, let's say you go with a different shield, like 10. Helmet, like nimble, not worth it. So we have to go even lower. I, I'm interested to see how it works out. I hope it works well for you. I could fear that it. It would not uh, live up to. But never know until you try, right? Yeah. Yeah, I mean, that's really an issue I see that. <sighs> um. I mean, you don't want to damage the armor, right? So usually when you're picking Nimble, you don't want to use a shield, but you want to use it um, with double grip, so you don't get the extra fatigue penalty. 
Um, but <laughs> look at this. Look. Um, we got a brigand leader on a one skull contract. Oh, nice, oh, nice, oh, shinies. Yeah, I want it. Um, okay, so the downside is this guy is not. I don't know if I dare gate. I think we're just gonna we're gonna bait the gonna bait bait the brigands by it. And we Oh, he should be targets. Like, I would think they come to watch us. Them, but I'm guys. Throwing weapons. Yeah, so Astro Bioman just asked um, what weapons, or he didn't ask, but he said that he's not sure about what weapons to use in a duelist. And I told him anything really flails, swords, axes. Whatever you can, any any one-handed weapon that you can wield with double grip that is nice with double grip. So flails probably if you want to hunt armor, swords in general if you don't have that much fatigue. Um, but you you like the bonus to hit chance and repost of course is super nice too. And axes is probably the strongest um, because of the damage multiplicator. Uh, how the damage amplification in Battle Brothers works. You can get... Um, I did the math and I'm not sure about how Executioner works. So I came up with numbers uh, between 350 and 400% damage on a headshot with an axe. So that's insane. Basically with a decent axe you should be able to, to one-shot any raider with a duelist, uh, if you have the right perks to this, um, and if you hit the headshot, I mean, you, you will shred his armor and instantly kill him. Yeah. Hmm. Probably, probably even like two shot, two three shot a hatch knight, if you have luck and and you manage to get two headshots in a row. Yeah, that's most likely. So, 
this case I think they have one of the most scary uh, like the brigand leader with the spear usually a lot of damage of course uh, it's gonna hit almost so I would like to step down here done here I think I'll step forward and double it Time to deliver the clothes. I don't think. Just me. So, as for the right perks. Um, you probably want to have Executioner, and you want to have Killing Frenzy, and you want to have Berserk. Um, if you feel like going crazy, then you can get Crippling Strikes on top of that, but I think you will do enough HP damage with a decent axe, but like, still, if you want, go for it. Um, about Headhunter, I'm not that sure. Honestly, uh, we discussed that a lot already. So how Headhunter works is, or in most situations, uh, on paper it looks really good, right? But um, in, a, in a usual scenario, you will hit the body, you will hit the body, you will hit the body a third time, the body armor is gone, the helmet is fully intact, and suddenly uh, Headhunter procs. And you're going for that headshot. Yay! Yeah, instead you could have gone for the body and killed that guy. But no, you're going for that headshot. Thank you, Headhunter. Um, so that's that's the downside of Headhunter, basically. Uh, if there would be a perk, let's say, that gives you a toggle ability where you won't get any headshots, where you can basically the, the an, an inverted Headhunter, that would be awesome. That, that would be so good. In that combination with Headhunter. <laughs> yeah, that would be so good. But since we don't have that, Headhunter is kind of a gamble. Then again, Astro Bioman said that he found a famed, uh, a famed axe that rolled a bonus chance to hit, to hit the head. That's actually really cool. I mean, if you can get um, a, a Brute on top of that, or maybe even a Brute Killer on the run, holy crap! A brute killer on the run duelist with that axe, <laughs> let's say 40% chance to hit the head or, or 42, 45. I mean, that guy, that guy will go nuts, right? He, he, will, he will wreck all the shits. Give, give, him, give him the love cool set and, and he will... I mean, that's probably not even fun anymore. That's the dream then. Okay. So... Just for now, I think I will have a short uh, dinner break uh, then I'll be back in 10 minutes or so <coughs> mm -hmm. and we can uh, I think I'll put the best famed item on display while I do mm -hmm. dinner or well I set up yeah, and maybe maybe uh, put in a text message on screen that you're going for a 10-minute break. Yeah. So when people join in, they see, ah, oh, okay, 10 minutes. I think it should be up now. I added a bit of text to this uh, image, so we have some Short break, be right back, yeah. <laughs> and some sub cave, in the thank you. <laughs> <laughs> Yeah, of course. Uh, if you guys have questions, I'll I'll stay here so we can we can do the numbers crunching, um, the theory crafting. Of course, I do like that.
Yeah, but it's basically that, that that's my current dream. I want to get that really good X duelist going. <laughs> Terminator says, I kind of miss the old town screen now that I'm looking at it. Yeah, I agree. If links are permitted in chat, I'll link my screen, shut off the X. It's pretty nice. Let me check. Uh, Johan didn't set up Nightbot, so he's not going to whip you. That pesky, pesky Nightbot. So go ahead. Go ahead and send us your juicy, juicy axe. Home Destroyer. Not that bad. I can't compare it right now. Let me let me check real quick. Because I can't um I can't recall the exact damage numbers. I'm not that good at recalling damage numbers. Um So alright, what do we have here? Melee weapons. And we want the battle axe. Where's the fighting axe actually? Oh, it rolled damage. Oh, what the frack? It rolled actually damage. It rolled damage and chance to hit that. Are you shitting me? Are you shitting me? That axe is fucking great, man. Like, okay, let's let's start the calculator, shall we? So, if my if my uh, assumption is correct, then you will have a minimum damage of 150, um, not including the effectiveness against armor. So that's 150 is only the, uh, the, the, the HP damage. So we have to actually multiply it with 1.3. So 159 damage minimum on a headshot. And if my calculations are right, then it's even more. Let me check. 43 multiplied with 4. Multiplied with 1.3. So on a headshot, if my calculations are right, you will deal 200 and 23 armor damage. 223. I mean, you you gonna two shot a hatch knight with that fucking weapon if you hit the head twice in a row. I mean, imagine that, yeah? That hatch knight comes to you like, Herder, I'm super strong. And you're like, no. oh, I didn't, I didn't take into account double grip. Oh my god, I'm a dumbo. Okay, okay, let's let's go for double grip then. That's another 25%. So multiplied with 1.25. So 
279 damage, ladies and gentlemen. He's probably going to fucking one-shot a Hatch Knight. Yep. Or maybe two-shot. I mean, you have to destroy the armor first, right? But, yeah. Nice, nice. Sir. On a duelist. On a duelist it is. Oh, and I didn't check. I didn't check the duelist perk as well. So I didn't take the duelist perk into account. Uh, oh, da, 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 da. Perks. Okay, so an additional 25%. Additional means actually that it's additive. So um, you will get 55% of the damage ignores armor. That's hard to calculate now because I don't know the exact numbers um, that you will get on the skill on chop. Uh, so to, to, to actually um calculate the numbers of the armor ignore we would have to take the armor into account but i mean he has a chance of one-shotting a hatch knight i'm not that sure though i would i would say it's probably safer to assume that he would two-shot a hatch knight probably I mean that's crazy. That's just that that's absolutely nuts. That's absolutely I will I if if I were you and I got that that damn he's going to hit Orc Warrior's heart even yep, indeed. I would I would actually go for a duelist. I would try to, to roll a duelist and try it out. Again, we're talking about Executioner, we're talking about Killing Frenzy, so these two you need to have, uh, and Duelist of course, these three actually, these three. And I mean, if you take an Axe, you, you have to take Axe Mastery, but yeah, that, that's, that, that goes without saying, I guess. Yeah, for for a decent duelist, you need to to look out for um, a guy with uh, with talents in melee skill and melee defense. And uh, if you want to go nuts, then then he should have decent resolve because he will get surrounded probably. I don't know if you want to go for Lone Wolf or not. I find it quite gimmicky. I don't know. I don't know. 